Welcome to the Q2 2020 Storage Labs Town Hall. We have some exciting updates to share with you today. The first portion of the presentation is pre-recorded, and this ensures that we can share the details easily without technical difficulties. At the end of the video presentation, we're going to conduct a live Q&A, and the live Q&A will be held at community.storage.io in an AMA fashion. In addition to this live stream, we'll also be placing the entire recording, including the questions online for reference. The videos will live in our forum, as well as on the Tardigrade platform where you can uh, download them through a share link and also be retained on our YouTube channel for reference. The text portion of the AMA will also be retained on the forum. We're going to begin the presentation now with a forward-looking statement. This document contains forward-looking statements about our product direction. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described for our products remains at the sole discretion of Storage Labs. The information herein is not a commitment to deliver any material, code, or functionality and should not be relied upon in making purchase decisions. Our topics today are first an executive summary, next tardigrade and network updates, roadmap product update, token governance and compliance, and then the Q&A, which will be held at community.storage.io. Our featured speaker today is Ben Golub, Executive Chairman. My name is Jocelyn Matthews, and I'm the Community Manager here. We're going to start now with an executive summary from Executive Chairman Ben Golub. Ben? Well, thank you, Jocelyn. And as always, thank you to our wonderful community, and thank you to all of the tremendous people who work at Storage. This has been an unusual year, to say the least, an incredible year in many ways for us. As I like to say, it is difficult and very few companies succeed in, in launching a storage service. Uh, building a storage service is hard. Building a cloud storage service is hard. Uh, building a decentralized cloud storage service that's enterprise grade has really never been done. And trying to do it in the midst of a global pandemic is uh, adds yet another challenge. But i uh, very excited to say that we are well on our way to achieving our goal for this year, which is achieving product market fit with the world's first enterprise grade decentralized storage service. As you know, we went into production, full-scale production on March 18th. We had our last town hall in uh, April. And uh, honestly, for most of the second quarter, we were working on making sure that we fulfilled our enterprise grade goals, making sure that we're driving continuous improvement in durability and performance and availability. Of course, excited to bring on our first customers, first partners and, and our first connectors. We saw a significant scaling in the number of storage node operators and work on their experience significant growth in the number of users and scaled their experience. We added a tremendous new member of the team, uh, Paul Ford, who comes to us as uh, our chief marketing officer with a background that included uh, SendGrid and Twilio and uh, data center experience through Rackspace and SoftLayer. We also added our first independent board member, Brian Lilly, who was previously the chief product officer and the chief technical officer and the chief information officer at Equinix. So again, great relevant data center experience. We put in place our COVID-19 response plan, which I'll talk about in a bit, and uh, took advantage of the fact that the uh, there was a rise in crypto prices towards the end of last quarter and through this quarter to shore up our balance sheet. Uh, looking into uh, the rest of Q3 into Q4, uh, the first, second, and third priority that we have is our customers, both uh, making sure that our existing customers are uh, successful and good references and bringing on new customers, executing on the partnerships that we signed, running an enterprise-grade service and everything that's entailed with that. Uh, but we're also going to be building some new functionality. And one of the things that became very clear to us in the course of building our service and running our first service is that while people are very excited to have uh, S3 compatibility and a number of customers were uh, enjoyed the approach of hosting their own gateway, many more wanted a hosted gateway. So we'll be providing that as well as some other uh, important things like multi-partner caching. And of course, continuous improvement in the Again, durability, performance, and availability. Uh, continuing to run ourselves in a fiscally responsible way in, a, in a, an unusual and challenging world. And uh, as I tell the team all the time, we need to be fluid. Nobody can predict what the world will be except that it will change. So with that, let me give you a little bit of an update on the tardigrade and, uh, and the network. As I mentioned earlier, our priority is ensuring that we are delivering an enterprise-grade decentralized service. While we are excited by the fact that we're decentralized, we know that any storage service worth that salt has to be there, has to keep track of data, has to deliver data quickly for people to be able to, to use it. We set some very rigorous gates in place for each of our betas. 
starting almost a year ago uh, with our beta one and going into production. Uh, since production, of course, we've continued to see improvements, including uh, all importantly, 100% durability. We've lost no files in now uh, over a year, maintaining uh, over three nines of availability, upload and download performance, which even at the 95th percentile is on par with uh, AWS. That all is very exciting for us. Of course, what enables us to do that is having a an underlying network of nodes operated by our community that is growing and that is stable. And we are just shy of 8,000 nodes now, uh, 8,000 active nodes, I should say, with lower than expected churn and with capacity that has grown pretty tremendously. And if I, if we just were to measure what people advertise as having available to put onto network among our storage node operators, it's uh, close to 37 petabytes. Um, we use some more conservative measures internally, but we're very excited that we now have a multi-petabyte scale enterprise grade highly performant, highly available, decentralized storage service. And that represents tremendous growth since launch. Um, on the sort of network network side, we, as I mentioned, are now uh, just shy of 8,000 node operators. That's in close to 85, over 85 countries. And something that I'm very excited about, over half of those node operators have been with us for uh, over 270 days, which means that as opposed to the V2 network, where we had lots of people join and then lots of people leave, we have a smaller number of people joining, but they're sticking around, providing great service, which is important for our users. And it's also important for our node operators because the longer you stay with us, generally speaking, the, the greater the financial reward will be. And on the user side, we're very excited to have 8,300 users who've created over 18,000 buckets. And among those users are some uh, larger customers that are worth calling out, a number of whom participated in the launch. Um, a few that are worth calling out now include Flurry and FileZilla. Uh, and connected. Customers include uh, a large scientific company, a large research institution, large uh, managed service providers, specifically in the backup space, a leading blockchain company, and a leading mobile company that we're very excited to be launching with and we'll be talking about more uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, we also continue to move forward with uh, partnerships and integrations with the likes of Mongo uh, and Influx on the database side, uh, Valero, uh, Kubernetes service, Restic and Rclone, which are backup, and QNAP, which is a NAS, uh, a NAS provider, and we partner with them both on the supply side and on the demand side. Now that we've had a few months of customer usage, some clear patterns are emerging in terms of the use cases that are best for Tardigrade as it exists right now. We're seeing a lot of usage for general backup, as we might expect, a lot of specific and uh, use cases around database, uh, virtual machine, Kubernetes, uh, and disk backup and recovery. What we are seeing very clearly from our customers is that they want a solution that is cost effective, but that also allows them to be 100% certain that when their data is needed, it can be recovered and recovered quickly to make sure that they hit their recovery point and their recovery time objectives. We're also seeing a lot of use for network storage. And what we are hearing from our customers is that to accelerate their usage, uh, both of the backup use case and of the general web development use case, what is really needed is a hosted gateway. Many customers like and use our uh, self-hosted gateway, but far more are looking for us as a company to be able to provide them, provide them with a hosted option in much the same way that AWS does. So that's a major development area for us in the coming year. We continue to invest in developer tools and they're very excited by the list uh, and the breadth, the quality of the developer tools that we have available for those people who want deep integration with us beyond uh, what they can get through an S3 gateway. Uh, and we're very excited to continue our progress on making more and more tools available uh, for tight integration for people who are node operators. But what's, uh, what's still to come uh, over the next two quarters from a product size? A few major things, I've said it a few times, but I'll say it again, uh, hosted gateway, very important to uh, us and to our customers. Uh, Multi-part upload, which will allow large files that are being uploaded to be broken up into multiple different pieces and have those uh, proceed in parallel. Uh, we're continuing to work on making our satellites uh, multi-region so that any individual satellite is hosted in a multi-region way, in addition to having multiple satellites in different regions that we already have. Uh, and multi-node dashboard, which will uh, services those node operators who are ma managing large numbers of, of individual nodes. Other things on the plate include major connection and performance improvements, of course, continuous improvement in our uh, storage node operator product, more connectors, improved Linux installation for people who are storage node operators, and uh, 
uh, perhaps not as exciting, but something that is important uh, is uh, making sure that for those snow operators who are earning more than $600 a year who happen to be in the United States, that we're able to track and uh, keep you in the good graces of the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, I'd now like to uh, discuss the elephant in the room, which is COVID-19. Major change, of course, to the challenge for the world, and uh, we are not immune. Um, as we discussed in our last town hall, uh, when it became apparent that this, uh, the magnitude of this crisis, we put in place a detailed plan to respond and are overall very pleased with the way the company has responded and how things have turned out for us. I start by saying that we are a decentralized storage company in more ways than one. 45 people in uh, close to this point, uh, 17 different countries, um, and even more than that in terms of cities. So we were already operating in a remote first environment um, and I've had very few hiccups. We stayed the course to launch Tardigrade in the midst of the pandemic and we're very pleased with the reaction that we saw. In terms of customers, it's been a mixed bag. We had some customers uh, who put their proofs of concept on hold while they responded to the crisis. Of course, it is very difficult to establish new customer relationships entirely virtually, but we're, uh, we're doing so and uh, pleased with the results. Of course, cloud computing in general is doing well in the pandemic, which, which helps us out. And from a budgetary standpoint, we mentioned last time we put in place some sensible belt tightening to make sure that we stayed in a strong financial position, no matter what the world threw at us. I'm very pleased with the results of that. Uh, we are doing even better than our plan from a financial perspective. We expect to end uh, 2020 with a really long runway. We're currently actually over 35 months of runway. So we have plenty of time to build a great service and plenty of time to deliver on the great expectations that our customers have of us. What we've seen during this crisis, and in fact, what the world has in general seen through the past several crises that we faced is that often the best companies uh, and the great disruptive businesses are forged in the crucible of economic downturns. Uh, you can look at VMware and Salesforce and, and honestly, AWS during the 2008 financial crisis. You can look at Google and uh, a number of others and Facebook uh, during the uh, dot-com bubble burst. And what you see is that the great companies tend to come out of these tough times. Certainly the world is starting to see even more usage of cloud computing in general. Uh, cloud companies from uh, AWS to Zoom are doing very well during this, this period. And we think that ultimately that will be true of us as a company. Not only are we providing a disruptive solution that the world really needs right now, which is a great, uh, highly available, decentralized, private and secure way of doing object storage, uh, but we're also seeing that customers are more willing to take risks now because the economic and the other priorities are so great. So while neither we nor anybody wished uh, something like this would happen to the world, we are prepared to take advantage of this opportunity to build a strong company and a strong service and a strong community. We also wanted to give back. And as we mentioned at the last uh, town hall, we launched a program for people who are doing research in, uh, in COVID who, are, who have a need for cloud storage in order to respond. This program provided free storage for nonprofits, hospitals, and other organizations working to combat the virus. And we are seeing uh, very encouraging results from people who are doing that. And we're glad to be able to do our part to, to give back. So a few final thoughts. First of all, to everybody uh, in our community and beyond, we hope you stay safe. Uh, we are all in this together. Hope that the next town hall, we and the world will be in a, in a much clearer position and understanding of, of what will happen during this crisis. Now I'd like to move on to the other formal part of our town halls, which is our discussion of token governance and compliance. We've now had almost a year of uh, regular reporting on, on our tokens, and uh, actually we've had more than a year of reporting on our tokens and uh, more than a year of implementing a new time lock, and I'd like to talk about that in a little bit. Um, if you want more details, our token flows report was published on our blog on August 5th, and you can see all the detail behind this. A few highlights to note. We continue to have 245 million tokens in long-term lockup. Over the course of this past uh, of Q2, we used approximately 9.2 million tokens. Um, that's between network uh, operations, uh, service provider payments, and the storage employee salary program. So our operating supply went from 26.8 million down to 17.6 million. That directly increased the total circulating supply in, uh, in the broader community. Uh, but the total storage supply remains fixed at 425 million. Moving on to the time lock, as, 
as you may recall, in in the end, in Q4 of 2018, we announced a rolling time lock program where we took our 245 million tokens, divided them into eight separate tranches of 30.6 million tokens each, uh, that had uh, time locks that were set to uh, expire uh, in successive quarters over the course of two years, over the course of eight quarters, and we established a pattern that at the end of every quarter, as one uh, tranche became unlocked, unless we had provided 90 days advance notice, we would relock that token. And so the Q119 token was relocked to Q1 of 21, the Q219 was relocked to Q2 of 21, et cetera. Um, and we have been following that pattern. Uh, as we had non announced in our uh, last town hall, the tranche three will not be being relocked. So the tranche that is coming unlocked in Q3 of this year will not be locked, uh, which will add another 30.6 million tokens to our operating uh, our operating reserves. Um, and our expectation is that uh, our Q4 tranche will fall back to the regular pattern of being relocked. So with that, I'd again like to thank the community for all of their hard work. Of course, uh, thank the tremendous people who work at Storage Labs. We are moving the QA from a live format to an online format. But look forward to getting your questions. And of course, thank you again for all that you do to help make this tremendous journey um, a reality. Thank you.